It is 530 and time for our daily two on your side town hall. It is our chance to answer your questions. We of course thank you very much for sending them to us and for joining us. We think we're going to start. Hi everybody. I'm Michael Wooten. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kate Welsh. Show for 849-2200 is the number to text. And ahead this half hour, we have tough questions for the leader of the city of Buffalo. A lot to ask Mayor Byron Brown, who joins us live in just a moment. Plus poll position. We are four weeks away from election day. We'll go ahead and advance here if we can. And we're going to answer a viewer's question about where things stand in the race for president right here in New York State. And later on, poll watchers. Can you just show up at a voting site and monitor what's going on? Our verified team gets answers on that. So we have a lot coming up, but we want to begin tonight's town hall with a series of big issues right now in the city of Buffalo. It affects people who live, work or even just travel into the city limits. And not only is the city up against the clock with the census deadline, but there are some serious concerns about the city budget as well. Yeah, plus where is the city right now in terms of proposed reforms to the police department? And there is a high profile new law that passed the council that is now waiting on a final decision from the mayor. So we want to talk about all of that and more with Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown, who joins us now live. A lot to get to, no doubt. Mayor, thanks for joining us. And I just want to get right to it. We just heard Governor Andrew Cuomo's announcement on COVID enforcement. He's asking local police throughout the state to start ticketing people seen without masks in public or anyone who's not complying with social distancing requirements. Have you heard from the governor personally about this? And are you telling your officers to start doing this and start ticketing people? I haven't heard from Governor Cuomo personally. Uh, the city police for months have been in sports, enforcing the governor's mask mandate, which is keeping people across New York State safe. What we do is when we see people without masks in the community, Buffalo police ask them to put on a mask. If they do not have a mask, we have supplied our police officers with masks that they can give to members of the public so that people do not have to be ticketed, but that they still comply with the state's mask mandate. The governor is also imposing some tough new restrictions. This, of course, of course, in an effort to um, try to deal with this kind of small COVID um, outbreak that we are seeing these kind of clusters in certain parts of the state. Um, under this new criteria, the governor would highlight a specific town or neighborhood instead of having to rely on an entire region kind of reaching that point. Um, they would be able to close all non essential businesses for two weeks, including restaurants, bars and gyms. Uh, today, those restrictions were placed on certain portions of Brooklyn and Queens. Luckily here in Western New York, even though we saw a little bit of a spike mayor, what a couple of weeks ago, our numbers looking pretty good at the moment. Do you agree with this kind of new approach from the, the state and from the governor? We're seeing coronavirus spiking in communities across the state, across the nation. This is an effort on the part of the governor to keep members of our state safe and, and healthy. It is a strong measure, but in Buffalo, what we have been doing is talking to people every single day, reminding them about the importance of wearing masks, physically distancing by at least six feet, uh, washing their hands frequently, and to avoid all mass gatherings. We're seeing pretty good compliance in the city of Buffalo, but we will continue to educate, to reach out, uh, and to talk to people in our city every single day about what could happen if the numbers begin to go in the wrong direction in the city of Buffalo. Obviously, what we are seeing happen in Brooklyn, we don't want to see happen in Buffalo. We want to turn now to the census as there are just 25 days left for people to respond in the city of Buffalo. A lot riding on these numbers, including hundreds of millions of dollars in federal funding and representation in Congress as well. And Mayor, there's been a lot of confusion. The Census Bureau moved up the deadline, then a judge intervened, and that's happened now a couple of times. Yeah, so Mayor, do you worry about the impact um, that that's going to have on the rate of participation and accuracy in the count? And what are you doing differently this year to ensure that Buffalonians are well represented. I know getting an accurate census count for the city is very important to you. You know, all of the changes uh, with the federal government uh, dates moving up, moving back, certainly that could impact the very negative way. Every single day talking to people, helping people fill out census, 
Uh, we use a variety of different platforms, whether it's social media, whether it's print ads in community newspapers, uh, whether it is television commercials, partnering closely with county government, partnering closely with community-based organizations, with our immigrant and refugee community, going into hard-to-count communities, doing everything that we can to increase the count. Uh, right now, the count is still much too low in the city of Buffalo. We're at 52.4 percent, uh, and we continue on a daily basis uh, to go out into the community and to assist people in filling out the census. Moving on to the budget, no secret, the Pardon pandemic me, I got, has impacted. I got that wrong. It's 54.2. I flipped the numbers. 54. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit better. <laughs> Thank you for the clarification. We want to talk about the budget as well. Speaking of numbers, no secret, the pandemic has done a number on the city's finances. Buffalo's credit rating was just downgraded from A plus to A. And a bit of developing news in this regard: the president saying late today, that negotiations are over. No COVID relief bill before the election. So without any help from Washington. What are you going to do? Uh, well, we're going to continue to um, uh, freeze accounts, to work to cut overtime, uh, to do everything that we can to tighten our belts reasonably in the city of Buffalo. But there is going to come a time when the federal government is going to have to provide direct financial aid, not just to Buffalo, but cities across the country, uh, towns across the country, counties and states or this nation is going to be plunged into a depression. If you even listen to the comments of the uh, director of the Federal Re Reserve, uh, action is going to be required from the federal government. Uh, and at some point, uh, the president and others in Washington are going to have to act uh, to assist municipal governments all across the country. And Mayor, if that doesn't happen, it's not going to happen now before this election. So you would be optimistic that maybe it could happen early next year? Uh, I'm hoping it will happen early next year. Uh, I'm certainly um, uh, feeling very strongly that there is going to come a time when there will be a recognition in, in Washington when people stop playing politics with the lives of the American public, uh, that there will need to be direct financial assistance to municipalities all across the country, uh, both at the local level and the state level. We know that police reform uh, is still a big issue here and in many communities around the country. Um, we know that your relationship with the police union uh, is a bit strained. Um, two things on the table right now. There's a police contract still in negotiations and there are police reforms that still need to get finalized. Um, when did you last speak with the union and are you concerned about being able to get some of these big things done? I mean, I know there were a, a lot of what people would consider to be maybe the easier and smaller changes that happened in the aftermath of some of the unrest. Um, now comes maybe the difficult part? We have a negotiation team that has been uh, talking to the police union uh, every single week. Uh, we have gotten closer in terms of some of the things that we believe are important reforms for policing in the city of Buffalo and for our community. Uh, we have seen more cooperation from the union in those negotiations. Uh, I certainly would like to see it wrapped up sooner rather than later uh, for the benefit of our community. And we continue to work hard and to be very diligent in communicating to the union that now is the time to be bold. Now is the time to take action for real reform in the best interests of our community, our police officers, and most importantly, uh, the people uh, that live visit and work in the city of Buffalo. And on that note, one of those reforms on the table literally right now is Cariel's law that requires Buffalo police officers to intervene when they believe that unreasonable force is being used against a civilian by another police officer that also protects an officer against retaliation. And just some background here for the viewers. This law is named after Cariel Horn. She's a former officer who 14 years ago intervened when she says a fellow officer was choking a handcuffed suspect. Horn decided to go before an arbitrator in an open public process. The arbitrator recommended she be fired and then a judge approved it. As a result, she lost her job and her pension 
And this new law would aim to prevent all of that from happening. So bringing us to now, the city council's passed it, and now, Mayor, it's sitting on your desk waiting for your final decision. So what is the plan, and are you going to sign it? So, Kate, what you just described, what you just read off, would not have prevented Officer Horn under those circumstances from being terminated. Uh, the Buffalo Police Department did not uh, uh, intentionally terminate Officer Horn, Horn for intervening. There was never any intention uh, to terminate Officer Horn. Officer Horn made the decision uh, to go to an open public arbitration hearing, a decision that no other police officer before her or since her has, has made. She knew when she decided to go into that process that the decision of the arbitrator would be the decision uh, that uh, would be made by the Buffalo Police Department. She decided to do that anyway. The arbitrator recommended her termination, and that's what happened. Now, the city of Buffalo has a duty to intervene policy. We've had it since uh, December of 2019. That policy was mandated uh, by the State Department of Criminal Justice Services. Uh, it was mandated for every police agency uh, in New York State. And uh, the law that has been developed uh, certainly mirrors the policy that is already in place in the Buffalo Police Department and other elements that already exist in state law. So I am reviewing it. Uh, we will have a duty to intervene law in the city of Buffalo. But right now, what has been proposed exactly mirrors the policy that we have in place and mirrors everything that already exists in state law. Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown has been joining us. A lot of issues in the city right now, Mayor, and uh, thanks for coming on and, and answering our questions. We appreciate it. Very good to be with you. Thank you for the opportunity. You bet. Take